Supergirl number 19. Uh, mm. Steve Orlando's co-writer this month. Jodie House is back next month, but this month he's co-writer is Vita Ayala, Ayala, I think I should say her last mm-hmm. name. I want to say. Close, I close enough, eh? Tough, tough name. Ayala. I, I don't know. I haven't, yeah. I haven't heard anyone pronounce it yet, so mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm just sort of shooting in the dark. Uh, Jamal Campbell's on the art. Um, how did you feel about this issue of Supergirl? So, I appreciate what it did. Mm-hmm. Far too wordy. I had to read it in two parts. Really? Um, okay. Yeah. Because uh, I actually, I quite liked it. Because I, I, I went yeah. in kind of feeling, okay, so how does not in this issue? I don't know how this one's going to be. It'll feel different, sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, I actually think it ended up in a really nice little one one and done. Obviously, there's a, there's a lot about the start with like Bones, like just sort of like building the, the final story for issue 20, yeah. which is the end of the series. But... The the, you know, the the story just basically being this kid, this non-binary girl. Well, I shouldn't say that. You know what I mean. This non-binary Person. kid. She, you know, yes. Yeah. Uh, but gotcha. she, she. Uh, I've even seen she. They, right? They, they like have doubts about Supergirl, and Ben's interviewing her because. Yep. Because uh, Lee, I think the name is uh, Lee's been writing like mm-hmm. a like a, a blog post like for Catco's app, right, about yeah. how Supergirl's this great person, and Ben's been having his doubts, so he goes and interviews her, and I said, like I said her again. It's just really hard. This is hard to untrain yeah. yourself. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. This is really hard. But, but but here's here's what I'll give you credit. At least you're conscious of it, and you're just not. Oh, I am. Me. No, it's just it's just really so, difficult because you you're so trained that everyone's one or the other. It's, it's, it's just, very yeah, it's, it's difficult. And, but anyway, so. Yeah. And Lee tells a story about how Supergirl was there because Lee was having trouble, like, you know, getting bullied at school, hadn't told her parents, you know, like I kind of said her, uh, hadn't told their parents. their parents about what was going on and so on and so forth. And it was this story about how Supergirl saved the day and then said, hey, if you need me, I'm still going to stick around and showed up and they had fun together. They did various things and, you know, gave out advice, all these other things. And it was kind of this story about how Supergirl stuck around and it wasn't just about punching things. It was about being there and being like a solid rock. And the article that was, you know, Lee writes later on is called uh, Indestructible Shoulder. Yeah. Uh, it, it almost felt like Supergirl's pal, Lee. Yeah. You know? And I, I think it was just a nice little feel-good uh, you know, because this was the same type of story that I'd expect from Superman, and like a, a yeah. one-shot issue where he'd be there for some kid who was having a problem of some kind, and yeah. uh, you know, I, I think maybe if I had a criticism, it's maybe the the bully who's like you know upset because his so parents are getting divorced finish. because his dad might be gay. Like yeah. that was maybe just a bit on the nose that part of it. Yeah. Well, and his but, little buddies like, oh, like father like son, and it was just like, yeah. all right, well. It's just funny because it feels on the nose, but at the same time, I can't really argue and say that it's not realistic because I feel like yeah, there are oh, shits no. like this. That... Yeah, well, it's it's you know, I I listened to Bill Hader talk about comedy writing this week, and he's mm. like, when you're doing satire, you you can go too far, right? And that's like they used to say in the SNL writing room, it's putting a hat on a hat. Mm. It's like yeah, the hat's funny, but when you put a hat on top of the funny hat, it's not funny anymore. And I felt kind of like this is putting a hat on a hat because you're dealing with a non-binary issue. You know, and the the person bullying, and it was just kind of like, okay, well, and well I, liked, I, I think you have to have the bully there because that was such a, a big part of the plot. Well, yeah, but I'm just talking about the the the, the friend that's like, hey, yeah, hey, the, the yeah. extra part where we get a bit more about what's going on with him. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was just maybe a bit too on the nose. Uh, but I really like the rest of it. Obviously, it ends with the cliffhanger where. Ben's like, oh, maybe, you know, I, I can't trust this Supergirl now, and yeah. he's on the phone to his parents, and then Supergirl shows up at his front door, because she's like, oh, I heard you need help, and yeah. he's all shocked, I, and that's the that's the I, cliffhanger going into the final issue of the, the series. Yeah, I also like how it, it got into Ben and his family, that's kind of just like, yeah, they sent me out here, they wanted me to go to some prep school and mm-hmm. be put away, but I don't want to go to that place, I'm, you know, and so they kind of just pay for everything he needs, and it's very distant, and I like that development. With that character, yeah, and then even even how Orlando dealt with the non-binary for someone that I don't want to say that I'm ignorant to this thing and stuff, but I definitely I don't encounter it in my day to day life. Yeah, you, you're unaware. Yeah, yeah, you know. So I like how it handled with Lee being like, you know, everyone's you know says that I look like a, a guy, but I don't feel like a guy. But I, you know, I also don't feel like a girl because that feels wrong too. So I just I don't yeah. feel like I belong anywhere, and I 
it, right it, was, it was a really good issue at making you empathise with maybe something yeah. very specific that maybe you haven't encountered. I mean, exactly. I, I mean, we recently haven't. Uh, we had we had that Dead Man mini, which also encountered yeah. this stuff as well, and that was I was I was also very good at that because I felt like I'd learned a lot from that that mini series about yeah. something that I didn't know, and mm-hmm. I feel like this kind of like came in and kind of backed that up a little bit. Uh, yeah, definitely. And so, that, so that's the part I like about it. But again, it was very wordy and just you know, but it never felt preachy. So that's why I, I like the. I like what was there. I just felt like it, it's cramming kind of like, everything in. At one point, Lee kind of like when, when Supergirl eventually shows up and like kind of like stops the bully from you know yeah uh, attacking. I I felt like Lee afterwards said, "Hey, I actually really like that you were there to back me up, but you yeah. didn't speak for me either." And I feel like that's kind of like when you say it's not too preachy, that's kind of what it's doing. It's it's making yeah. the point, but it's not speaking for. You know, exactly. it, I don't know. It's it's, make, it's, it's doing the same it's kind perfect. of thing. I, I think it's it works quite well in that sense. Yeah. Uh, so no, nah, I, I thought it was a great uh, one shot. Yeah. I'm sad the book's ending. Obviously, we know that she's going to play a big role in yeah. Bendis' Superman. So at least if she's a regular main character in that and she feels important mm-hmm. there, I won't be too pissed about it. But uh, now, what I do want going forward though is a concise Supergirl because I feel since New Fifty Two, she's jumped all over the place. Mm. I feel, I feel like she may age up a little bit for this Bendis run, but that's kind yeah. of natural. You can you can you can kind of take it. Okay, she's learned some stuff. She's aged yeah. up a little bit, uh, but hopefully it just continues the classic Supergirl that we've kind of had uh, going forward. Mm-hmm.